this video we're going to show you real surgical footage of how we removed a bullet from a spinal cord. This video has graphic surgical footage so please do turn away if you are squeamish or under the age of 18. We're going to show you how a laminectomy is done and how we removed a bullet from inside a spinal cord. So let's get to it. Cases like this require an experienced theatre team who'll get things like the exoscope and all the operating instruments set up. Everything needs to be like a well-oiled machine and running smoothly. So whilst we get the first x-ray to show us exactly where we think the bullet might be, we start to prep and drape the patient and get everything ready for surgery. Here you can see the exoscope getting into position and we're ready to start. Please do remember that this is real surgical footage, so turn away if you're under 18 years old. We start by marking the back where we think that the bullet's going to be, and then we prep and drape with these blue sterile drapes. Next, we put something called Iban on, which has got antibiotic, which is an antiseptic film, which protects the patient and us. We get all of our instruments ready before we make the first cut. And here you can see the exoscope being wheeled into position. So we make the initial cut that goes through the skin and the fat that's just underneath it. Next, we need to spread the skin apart to give us some better access to the tissues underneath. After this, we're going to use this white instrument called a monopolar, which burns and cuts through tissue and it seals off any bleeding arteries at the same time. This helps give us a nice clean dissection through the muscles and stops it being very bloody, which will obscure what we're trying to see. At this point, we're trying to strip off the muscle from the bone. This swab will go in and help peel away any remaining muscle from the tips of the bone there. The patient's head is towards the bottom of this image and we can see the spinous processes of the spine and these are the bits that you can feel on your own back. We're going to put a metal instrument on these spinous processes and we filled the hole with something called betadine to keep it clean and we'll cover it up and then take an x-ray to see exactly where we are. And this is the x-ray machine coming in now. On that x-ray we can see the bullet lying right in the middle of our operating field so we know that we're going in the right direction. So now we need to get all of this bone off and especially in the thoracic region or mid-back the bone can be really tough especially in younger patients. There's a lot of work that needs to be done here with quite crude looking large tools and then eventually we're going to go towards using a drill to help make this job a bit more quick and efficient but at the moment you can see we're doing the bulk of the work with these rongeurs, which are just chewing away and biting away at the bone. Now you can see the drill being used and this is making a gutter on either side of the spinal canal. And we're going to use that as a way to get into the spinal canal. Lots of drilling needs to be done at this point but once we've made a, a tiny entry point, we can use these kerosene rongeurs to just start chewing away safely at the bone and give us some access to the dura and the spinal cord underneath. Remember the dura is the leathery outer covering of the spinal cord that you can see right here. We've got quite a large area of bone that we've taken off. The spinal cord will be under this dura and now we need to prepare to cut it open. So we take a scalpel and we make a cut in the middle. There are two layers to the dura, so we just need to make sure that we go through each one of them without going into the spinal cord underneath. At this point, once we've made a small hole, we can use what we call blunt hooks to just gently tease open the dura from end to end. And underneath that, we have the spinal cord. A bit of bleeding is to be expected and that will come from the dural edges. 
So because these edges are in the way, we take these tiny little stitches and remember we're doing this under a microscope, so these are very, very small stitches indeed. And we'll use these to hitch the dura away from the spinal cord and anchor it away. This is a slightly finicky process and can take a little bit of time, especially tying off these stitches with instruments. So once we've done that, we've got the spinal cord underneath. It's, remember it's quite damaged because there's a bullet lying in the middle of it that's come in with high velocity and caused a major amount of trauma here. We need to make a small cut, bang in the middle of the spinal cord, where we think the bullet is. With the sucker in the left hand, we can feel that the bullet is a lump just underneath where we're making that cut. We're using a blunt hook again to just pry open this window we've made into the spinal cord. And at this point, we start to see a small glint of what might be the bullet. And there you can see it shining under the light of the exoscope. We make this hole slightly bigger, but just big enough to allow the bullet to be removed. And there we can see it. And now we're going to take it out. So that's a nine millimeter round that we've retrieved. So after that very satisfying bullet removal, we still need to close up what we've done. The dural edges need to be closed together because apart from the spinal cord lying in there, there's also CSF or cerebrospinal fluid. If this keeps leaking out through a defect that we've made, it can cause the wounds to not heal properly. On top of this closure, we put something called Duraseal, and this is an artificial glue that helps seal everything off. The next thing to do is we tunnel a drain in to let any excess blood out because we don't want that to compress the spinal cord. After that, we'll stitch up the muscles, fat and skin and take the patient back to recovery or the ward or intensive care or wherever they came from. So that video showed you how we can remove a, a bullet from the spinal cord. Hope you found it useful. Some of the things that we've done in there, including the laminectomy or removing the bone, is part of most operations that we do when we need to access the spinal nerves or spinal cord. If you've enjoyed that video, please do like, subscribe and leave a comment to let us know what you'd like to see in future. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon.